we have two to four year olds. So we have to find something that's simple and accessible for them all to do. So I thought that these little pine cone uh, trees that they look like when they're finished are a really good idea and they enjoy making them. So um, the weekend before we do them, I send a little note home to all the parents to go off on a little jolly around the new forest to find themselves some little pine cones. Uh, we come, they come back with all sorts, That's absolutely massive ones that are never going to stick, but we really need the small ones. Um, so when we've got those, then we go up to the forest school site and we get the bow saw out. Um, they're really good at bow sawing, but obviously we choose a small piece of wood. So um, I'm lucky enough to copy some hazel near where I live. So it's about that size, three centimetres. We don't want a massive bit because we want them to start it and finish it and then they can see it dropping off and you know it's theirs. So when they've both sawed their little piece, we get them to put their names on the bottom and that stops any arguments from happening over who's his who's. And then we go over to our little craft area and we've got our wood and our little pine cone, hopefully. And then this glue is the only glue I find that works. So it's more the pound shop. I've trialed all sorts of glues. School PA, PVA glue does not work. So this is really thick and tacky, which is what they need. It looks like toothpaste. So they can squirt it on and then they get their pine cone and all they do is stick it in like that. And ideally we'd leave it to dry for a little bit. Sorry. While they go off and play, it's always helpful if we can do that. So we just stuck it on the top and already it's starting to stick. It's so good, that glue. Then we just get some normal school paint and then we just paint away over the pine cone. And then when they've done that, we don't want to then cover it in plastic tat. So because we're up at Forest School, we've got a really beautiful field maple tree or a beech tree. And the children call it the golden tree because all the leaves are this colour really nice and golden. And then I've got this super hole punch, which is brilliant for young children because they can really squeeze it. And then we cut out little stars out of our, like that. And then we just pick them up and then they sprinkle them on the top like that. And then they covered in little stars as well, which is really cute. And then underneath, I always write when they're dry, Christmas 2023, so they will always remember the fun times they had at preschool at Christmas time. And they love to take them home. They look really cute. They're so simple, so easy, and just perfect for small children to do. And that's probably not five minutes, is it? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but it looks amazing. It's such a simple idea as well. So yeah, thank you very much, Sarah. They look thank brilliant. Thank you. Good. Thank you. I bet they have great fun with the paint as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> they look like the Greeks when they're finished. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Our second uh, second craft of Christmas is a pre-recorded one. And this is uh, a festive uh, winter song, which is uh, going to be shared by Susie. And it's it's quite complicated. I've, I've had a look and I've had a go at trying to learn the things. But this is the joy of being able to, to play this back. Um, you'll be able to learn these uh, these songs as you play and play the uh, the recording back. Um, so give me a second and I will try and play it for you. Hello and thank you for watching this Christmas video. I'm going to read a poem, a poem called The Oak. Uh, by Robert McFarlane. Oak. Out on a hill, the old oak still stands. Stag headed, fire struck, bare crowned, stubbornly holding its ground. Poplar is the whispering tree. Rowan is the sheltering tree. Willow is the weeping tree, and oak is the waiting tree. 
300 years to grow, 300 more to thrive, 300 years to die, 900 years alive. Uh, there is more to this poem, but that's just the first little bit of it. Hopefully you like it. So over here in my box, I've got some Christmas things. So I'm just going to sign some of those um, objects. Say hello to Milo. Hello, Milo. Can sit down. Come on. Come on. Sit. Wait. So what have we got? We have, we have Father Christmas. So Father Christmas. What else have we got? We've got a reindeer or a stag. A reindeer. A reindeer. sharing that uh, with us Susie that's brilliant next number three we have two uh, little crafts from Tara Tara over to you hi everyone um, today I'm gonna the first one I'm gonna start with is uh, what I call Douglas furry dust um, it's uh, a little sprinkling that you can put onto anything like a, a mince pie or I even put it on my salad today for lunch um, and it, it it goes well it's nice it's a nice like um, if anyone if you haven't tried Douglas fir before it's got very citrusy flavor that's just a little bit piney so it's quite sweet really refreshing and very unique as a flavor and um, it's just it's quite a fun little dust that you can put over the top so the end result will um, I'm not sure if you if you if you are you able to spotlight my video so everyone can definitely see it? Yeah. So um, that is the uh, the outcome. It's this little sort of dusty, dusty green mixture. To that, I've got a blender you can do this you you can get hand blenders which i love when i'm out in the woods because um adults as well kids and adults all just love to pull the cord it's like start starting a motor kind of thing but it it's rotates the blend the blades so um having a, a hand blender like that's good but because i'm indoors i'm going to be doing it in my my home blender you can also crush crush the needles with some sugar to in a pestle and mortar if that's easier for you um but i'm going to do leaves i'm going to put a little bit of ginger in there just for a bit of that sort of festive spice um just a dusting and i actually like to put a few chili flakes in too um because it, it gives you a bit of warmth and who doesn't need that in this season especially mimi being so damp <laughs> um i got an optional orange as well to grate in the Really nice. It complements the, the Douglas fir flavour really, really nicely. So I'll just get a bit of the zest in there. 
And then hopefully I'll have a bit of zest in here as well. So I'll put my blades on. That's ready to blend. And uh, I'm gonna do it with myself on mute so you can enjoy the lovely snow globe effect, but you don't have to hear the loud buzz. You can make your own sound effects if you want. I find it's good to give it regular attention and a bit of a shake and reblend, but just for time, I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to open that up, have a smell, and uh, that's the, the, the end result being that lovely dust, and I'm just going to serve that so you can see what it looks like at the end. Oh yes, I um, th thanks for the question, Nicole. Um, I didn't dry the fur needles, I picked them fresh yesterday, keeping that lovely um, aromatic kind of um, aroma. And uh, I find with dry doesn't pick that up as much. You want the sugar to kind of take on some of the moisture that's in the needles. So I've actually got a, a, a pastel donata, Portuguese custard tart, because I'm not a fan of mince pies, but it works It works just the same. It's pastry-ish and has something in, and I like to just sprinkle it all over and around. And then it wouldn't be complete if I didn't take a bite, would it? So cheers. Very good, very good. Um, so that's the first one. I'm gonna get the next one ready with my mouth full. So next craft is a twig star. I've got one here, which is what I made earlier. And um, I've I've made a little star with some raffia in the middle too. There's a lot of options for this. It's the sort of thing that you can um that you can depending on your group add. You know you can weave in little bits. You can make meaningful like reflections on the year if you want to. You know find something that represents um you know our, our time together in the year and weave in like bits of bracken and other interesting things. Or you can leave it as it is and it looks quite quite lovely. Um. So to make that, you're going to need some twigs and it's best if they're flexible. And what I'm going to do is cut five equal sections. So you can either have a few and line them up all at once, or you can take some that are very slightly varied in thickness but it helps if they're all flexible. So I just happened to have had five there, good planning. And you can do this with raffia, you can tie them together with raffia, or you can use, if you've prepared nettles earlier in the year and you've got some left over, then that works too. I'm just going to put my camera down on the board so that you can see clearly what's going on. Move my blender out of the way. We're not going to blend the star. And pretty much we're going to work two twigs at first. We're going to get I didn't count five. Make sure you count right. Okay, so we're working with the first two. And we're gonna put, make them into a point and tie them there. And, uh, It's not too important how exactly you tie them. So I like to do a few wraps to make it look pretty. Can you all see that okay? Just 
wrap the two together and I'm going to be pulling them apart in a second to tighten it. I'm just going to do a reef knot here. This is the sort of thing that um, if you've got a mixed ability group, it's great to get them to help each other or work together because it is quite fiddly on its own. So you've got, that's one point and you're going to just make a few more of those. If you have a twig, thin twig, you can match thick to thin. So I'm just working on either of the other points, doesn't matter which one. I'm just gonna start and tie it together. So I've got that and I'm just gonna make sure it crosses across there. So you can see I've got these two crossing over now. So I'm gonna attach my next one. And now we've got to think about whether it goes over or under. I'm gonna go under and then over with mine. And that's gotta be the pattern that you use every single time. Um, and if, whichever way you pick, under, over, or over, under, just make sure it's the same one every time. Sorry, I hope I'm not going over time. Maybe. So between between each one, I just like to arrange it. And you can see I've got a star starting to form, starting to form. That wasn't on purpose. And then I'll put in my last one. And that's going to be my full star. So I've got to remember which way I did. I went, which way did I go? Over. No, under, over. So we're going under, over. And then the last two ties. So now I've only got going under over, got to weave that in. So it goes under over and then tie the last one. Doesn't matter too much if your star is slightly off at this point, because you can do a lot of wiggling and reshaping wherever you need to. There we go. So it's all together now, and it just takes a bit of wiggling, getting into place before you get your exact star shape that you want. And uh, if you want to tie on bits at the end, you can always put bits up to, to hang up. You could decorate the trees around where your site is, but that's um, that's the end of my crafts. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, very much. from Wales. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, Dark. Lovely. Uh, and now we're going to go to Joe up in Cumbria, who is going to show us a reindeer wool decoration. Hello. Hello from West Cumbria. Um, thank you for that. I made a star look, I made a star. Uh, so my my reindeer I made because I was working with children who can you hear me? Yeah, is that good? Um, I was working with some children who were really struggling with knots, 
So I couldn't really do anything as knotty as the star. Um, anyway, so I found these and, and it's a reindeer and it's, so it's just made out of three twigs. Um, but what you can do is you can tell the children to go off and look for uh, a V-shape twig. Um, and when I did that, I had to, I had to put some V-shaped twigs around for them to find. Um, and then they come back with a V-shaped twig, that sort of thing that is found <clears throat> readily on any old, in any woodland. And then um, if they've got the V-shape and they just get another twig to make a little head, like that, so it's just two points where they would bind with some wool or pipe cleaners, because that seemed to be something that they managed to be easier outside, but I'm really hoping they're gonna get good at wool. So just attach those to form the triangle, which is going to be the reindeer's head. Rustly. And here's one I made earlier. <laughs> okay, so I was um we've been doing quite a lot of work on the binding. It's the same sort of thing as the star. Um trying to get them to do that independently. And then uh depending on the sort of wood, um this this is a green wood. I'll just pick this off the ground this morning, but so I've whittled away a little bit at the bottom where its nose is. And I'm either going to get the children to colour that in red with some chalk paints or some paints, whatever you use. And that can be quite effective. And that's something that can be done on site. Or you get some red wool, firstly, and wrap it round. Um, and then if you've got if you've got one that's made out of three twigs, then you've, you've already put some wool there. And um, if you use red wool, it makes it into the nose. So that's the nose is all red now. And what? And then it needs some um, antlers. So I've put some um, conifer, but you could use oak leaves or anything that you find on the ground. The children were doing uh, using ferns and making big ferny ears and they can be tied on with more wool to make antlers and then either whittling away to draw eyes on or use those crafty eye stickers that they like and then you hang it up and then it can go next to your star it can go on your tree and you can make really big ones, make really little ones as well. And they can be tree decorations. Ta -da! So that's my reindeer. That's superb. Thank you so <laughs> much. So easy. Uh, from from easy to something that has actually been requested uh, that quite a few people have struggled with. Um, we've got our, our very own Lushka, who is going to demonstrate how to do that uh, reindeer log animal. Um, she's had to do it recorded because it's uh, it, it takes longer than five minutes. Um, but uh, we had quite a few requests of people not being able to do the legs properly or uh, any hints and tips. So hopefully this will help. Hello, uh, welcome to the beautiful Firestone Crops here on the Isle of Wight. I am Lushka from Woodland Forest School or Wild Therapy Isle of Wight, depending on which session you turn up for. And today I am going to show you how to make some Christmas reindeer. Uh, we use as many tools as we can because it's the sort of end of Christmas term tool progression project. So we've used various different tools throughout the, the term on different Christmas projects. And then we have our reindeer for the last couple of weeks as our end of session project. So depending on your skill level, this project can take 25 minutes to two hours. So we're just going to take snippets and try and show you how it all comes together. So what you're going to need is a pair of secateurs for cutting the logs for the leg, a knife for sharpening the edges to make them fit to size, a saw of your choice for the various bits of cutting. We use an auger 
you could use a drill but we like the auger it's just another tool to use and then for the antlers we use a hand drill have a look at your piece of wood see what works naturally I like that little bit for the um, for the tail I think that will work nicely so as a result I'm going to put my legs on the other side we line up the dots make sure that they more or less even it's not the end of the world if they're not but you want them sort of roughly in a, in a rectangle don't have them too close to the edges because it'll split through to the end and then you have other problems so there you go. Also try and keep the auger or the drill up straight because the, the wood will naturally sort of go outwards um, and if you if you put it in at a skew angle like that you end up with a Bambi like deer it looks like he's on ice skates. Using an auger while filming is a particularly interesting challenge so just a little snippet here to show you how it works. You want to go into about halfway through the wood um, there so that you have a nice solid wedge for the leg. So after a not so quick pause we've got two, four leg holes there and a neck hole on this side and then on the other log we've got two holes for the ears and one in the center for the neck. If you drill too close to the edge you end up with a breakthrough like that and then you just have to sort of start again with one part or the other so my head's a bit shorter now than it would have been but it will still work well this bit's obviously a lot easier if you just use an electric drill but it, you know it depends on how it depends on your kids and what you're doing in your session so that's the more challenging perseverance requiring part of the project we're now going to go into actually doing the assembly bit and this bit's quite quick um so it, but it's where everything comes together nicely. For this bit you want four hazel rods, and we're using hazel, and you want two antlers, and then you have a neck. Now the neck bit is quite, you don't want a giraffe, you're not making a giraffe, so I get a longer bit and take bits off of the edge for one ear and off the other edge for the other ear, and then you can snip it. If you do the ears first, it's just a bit difficult. So just snip that bit off and that one off and keep them somewhere so that they don't get lost because now you have your two ears as well as your neck. So to get them in, we're going to do the same thing again. This hazel rod needs to go into there. Obviously, it's a bit big. So we're just going to very gently muscle control and whittling control because you're not trying to make a pokey stick out of it. You just want to make it big enough that you can then use a mallet to knock it into place. Watch the angle at which you knock it in because this is where you can very easily end up with Bambi legs. So again, take a little bit off of this side. See if it fits now a bit more. And makeshift mallet. There you go. Same again on the other side. So, this project is a bit more advanced than your usual, and it's more. Um, it's not really forest school in the sense of it being child-led and stuff because it has to come in a specific way. But if you are working with older children who like to do tool work and so on, then it's a really nice project to sort of check where they're at. Now, as you can see, my legs here are not even. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit off. There you go. Perfect. Lovely. Right, that's in, so now we want to put our neck in. Before we attach the neck, we're going to do the ears. So ears go in, so it's constant sort of adjustment, reassessment, recalibration, thinking, problem solving. So that's what makes it a really good activity to do with older children, or young adults. There's a variety of different ways to do the head. So you could use an axe, for example, and take off a chunk on the side so that you've got a more angled face. 
um, or you can just leave it as it is. I quite like to just uh, scrape off some of the skin like that and then I'll use, I'll have a little red nose down the bottom. Kind of support it in the neck here so that it doesn't take off too much of my, too much pressure on the legs. There we go. So here we have a reindeer looking up at the sky. We have some antlers. Got a bit of a squonky back leg here, you can try and adjust that. Doesn't really matter as long as he's standing up straight. Lovely. So thanks to Lushka for uh, for sharing with us that uh slightly more complicated project of a reindeer. Uh okay, well, unfortunately now it's my turn. Um so I'm gonna share with you a craft that is one I learned from a moomin, for those of you that remember those. Uh, my cousins come from Finland, and uh, on one of our vis visits to uh, to Moominland, we were taught how to make a, a craft icicle using some wool. Uh, so I generally use these with all of my my groups for all ages. For the younger ones, it's a really good uh, chance for them to show their gross and their fine motor skills. Um, and for the old ones, it's a nice thing to do as a, a paired weaving. So all you need is... Uh, two or more strands of different coloured wool, the same length. And if you want to do a sort of a, a craft along, they need to be fairly lengthy because, um, as you'll see in a minute, we're we're going to fold them in half, and then they'll fold in half again. So so the length does need to be sort of probably an arm's length, if not slightly more. So pinching the uh, the ends, all we're going to do is make tiny circles with our fingers. For the smaller children, they can do big ones with their arm movements. And you're gonna twist it and keep on twisting it just until the point where it starts to, to bunch around your finger and wind around your finger. I did this uh, last week with a group after doing toffee apples over the fire and I found that actually the stickiness of their finger made it quite tricky. Um, so we ended up having to, to wear gloves or you could do it around a stick as well. So the the, uh, the tighter you can make it, the, um, the nicer the pattern. So it's now starting to bunch around my finger. Now this is the point where you have to do a magic blow in the middle of the, the, the rope. So everyone blow. You gather the two ends together, just pull it down. And you can see through the tension, it, it twists it up into a really nice icicle shape. Um, and then you just do a simple overhand or thumb knot and the end that you were pinching so that they don't come undone. And because of the way that you've made it, the um, you'll have a, a sort of a trailing bit with the, the, the rough ends that can be snipped off, but you've also got a loop that you can hang it on your tree. Um, so I find that the children love to experiment with different colours. We made some... Um, can't find them now. Uh, we made some Christmas themed ones, which were uh, using green and red. We made some candy cane type ones, which were red and white. And uh, a lot of them like to do the blue and white ones that look really icy. And they hang really nicely on the, on the trees, uh, just as a bit of icicle decoration. So that's wool icicles. Oh, very nice. Perfect. Thank you. OK, now we come to a festive food bit which is going to be a pre-recorded video from Mimi. So bear with me. And she's going to share with us, uh, I think it's three recipes. It's it's a number of recipes, Mimi. It's um, And they, they all look absolutely amazing. So just bear with me in a minute. Good morning, everybody. It's Mimi here down at the beautiful Little Earth Common on a rather chilly December morning. So I've got the fire going and I've been busy boiling some water as I wanted to share with you my recipe for a warming winter dreaming tea. Um, it's full of antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin A, 
um, lots of ingredients um, for to boost that immune system and hawthorn berries for heart health we've got some cardamom really good for digestion um, and improving circulation we've got rosemary so full of antimicrobial properties perfect for this time of year cranberries lots of vitamin c and antioxidants in that what else do i like to use star anise really good for digestion as well and some cinnamon really good for blood and heart health as well so that's all going in my pot to boost my immune system and warm me up so all of that goes into a teapot so adding some lemon slices and orange slices we have the cranberries maybe three to four cardamom pods and a lovely sprig of rosemary mm. and a cinnamon stick or two and some star anise let's not forget those hawthorn berries i didn't actually forage for any rose hips but they would probably do really well for this tea as well oh and i forgot some cloves so three to four cloves can go in there and then add your water and you want to let that steep for about a good 10 minutes that water infused with all those yummy delicious ingredients and enjoy by the fire hello again i'm here at the woodland kitchen now where i'm going to show you some more festive recipes and as i do i'm going to have a quick sip of my winter drooping tea mm. oh, it was like christmas in a bowl the recipe i wanted to share with you first um is the damper bread recipe that we use all year round um, and we just change it up and so recently we're changing it for lots of festive twists but um, once you've brought it into a breadcrumb and we're going to add milk in a minute um, and bring it into a dough um, you twist it around the top of a bread uh, of a stick and cook it over the fire for 10 15 minutes 20 at the most um, and once it's cooked um, and you'll know that by it sounding hollow with a tap. It leaves a hollow, um, which we like to fill with lots of yummy goodies from jams and marmalades. And today there are options to warm up some apple sauce or maybe warm up some minced meat um, and then fill our bread dough sticks with those yummy goodies there's also a cranberry orange compote that we could make as well um so yes yeah, so to this i've added two tablespoons of salt 750 grams of plain flour and oh and two three tablespoons of baking powder and so work that all in your hands with about six tablespoons of butter if it's not looking like breadcrumbs you just need to add more butter um so we are pretty much there so now i'm going to add in my cinnamon sugar um into the flour sprinkle that in i'm going to go for two heaped spoons maybe one for luck and mix that in with your hands so yeah really great activity to warm up those those hands at this time of year as well. So get that nice and ready. And now we're going to add um, two cups of milk. Um, I do this really slowly because if it gets really sticky, it's just going to fall off the stick. And you're going to need to mix and knead this for a good 10 minutes until it forms a dough and is nice and elastic and soft and pliable. So grab a ball of dough like this mm. and get it nice and warm in your hand. Mm. That's it, lovely. And roll it, it like this. It's got bird seeds in. It's got cinnamon sugar in. I put some cinnamon sugar in. Do you want to have a smell? Mmm, it smells like Christmas. So some cinnamon sugar in there. And then, we're going to roll a sausage shape <laughs> like that that's it between your hands warm our hands up 
making things with our hands in the wood because it warms them up, doesn't it? It's those muscles moving. Especially if it's in winter. I'm going to put it over the top like that. And then I'm just going to wrap it around the stick. Have you got a stick for me? Yeah. This can be yours. Okay. And that's it. And then once it's cooked in about 20 minutes, could you eat it? You pull it off and there will be a hole in the middle and then we're going to fill it with apple sauce or mince meat or jam. Can mm. I eat it at the end? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to cook it. And then we wrap it around. Do you want to do some wrapping? That's it. Mom. Wrap it around. Perfect. Oh, lovely. And give it a squish so it sticks on. That's it. And then we're going to lean it up by the fire. Mom, it's cold down. Put it in here. That's it. We're going to make a little hole. Did it get smoky in your eye? Yeah, it's more good all the way around that side. Okay, I don't want to remember whose is yours. Baby, yours is the daddy one. Mine's the baby one. Yeah? Do you think that'll feel right in your body? You can put that in too. Why not? That's one. Baby? Oh, baby? Delicious! That is funny how you have your different rolls. That's a really. That's very cute. <laughs> 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 then put a handful of those in. Mm. Yeah, I reckon so. That's going to smell like Christmas in a pot. Oh, it's going to be lovely. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mimi. Now, uh, we've had a, a couple of variations of doing some um, some stars and reindeers using sticks, um, which are, are brilliant for those children that can tie knots. But if you're working with children that are slightly younger, uh, Janine's got a different way of doing the the, uh, the star using um, using elastic bands as something that might be slightly easier for younger children to do. So. I'm just going to put that one on for you as well. Hi everybody, this is how I would make my willow star. I, for this one I've got three sticks of willow. They're all dried and they're all lengths, all at the same length. So you need five sticks of willow and some elastic bands and some string and maybe some flexible willow if you want to weave the corners and this is how I do it so I've got uh, two joined together with an elastic band at the top and these are quite small elastic bands so you don't have to go around many times Just show you how I do that so I keep the actual willows together like this ends together because the elastic bands means that you can pull them apart so you can make that triangle shape with the elastic bands. So these ones are I've made already and there's three like this. So what I'm going to do I'm going to make the shape of a manger. So I'm like this that's what I get the children to look out for and then I'm just going to poke these ones through so that they're going through the manger to those two spare ones at the bottom spare ends and then I just literally join those ends up with elastic bands like so and then when you've, you're not sure what to do go back to that manger shape have a look again How you did it and then poke it through the hardest bit is seeing how to make seeing the star shape when it's see, it was the other way around there's always the manger in the in the middle and then join that one up and then when I've got all the ends joined up I can actually lash them together with string 
and then you can take the elastic bands off. If you've got lots of time and you've remembered to bring in the flexible will willow, which I haven't done, you can then weave in and out, even over and under, over and under, and that will also hold it all together. If you want to make a six point star, you need six, six lengths of willow, and you make one triangle, one complete triangle, and then you feed the other one through the shape in the middle, which is a hexagon, I think. Yep, a hexagon, <laughs> let's count those. Feed it through the hexagon in the middle, and so that the, it holds together. Otherwise, um, your triangle fall, falls through the middle if it's just two triangles. And again, you could just lash the ends together. That's one that I've lashed already. And again, you could weave the corners if you've got time. And you're not helping, helping all the other children at the same time to put the elastic bands on. There you go. Easy to hang up. And you can, it's fairly easy to move it around. You can always decorate it with some Christmas greenery or spray it if you really want to. There's a five pointed star and a six pointed star. Happy Christmas. Happy crafting. Oh, just a little different variation there. Okay, well, our last uh, scheduled uh, 12th craft of Christmas is uh, some lovely gingerbread houses which has been shared by uh, Lewis and Wem of Children of the Forest. So you know when you're going to watch a video from them, it's always going to be fun. Um, but after that, we might open up the floor to anyone else that would like to to share anything either in the chat or if you want to put your, your hand up, um, then you can uh, can also, we're more than happy for you to, to share some crafts. Um, or as it's, you know, getting close to Christmas and getting close to nine o'clock, feel free to pop off as well. But before you do that, we've got Lewis um, and Wem showing us how to make some gingerbread houses. Hey everybody, we're gonna show you how to make some gingerbread house decorations. They're really quick. You can make them really easy and simple, or you can go all out and elaborate and uh, make them pretty like swanky and professional looking. So yeah, let's show you how to make them. So this is a bit of, any wood will do. We've got a bit of uh, cladding here. And then come in at the top and cut two, look, roughly 45 degree angles, and then a 90 degree angle. So let me that. And then, what's the other point? Make it again. Oh no, what was the That was fine. So you have your house, but it's got all of these little furry, spiky, spongy edges on it. So I've got some sandpaper here. I've also got a little wood cookie, and I'm going to put that inside the sandpaper and just sand off all those horrible edges and try not to cringe too much because it's like the worst thing in the world. To ah! make it nice and smooth and not splintery anymore. Okay, so got a blank. Um, if we were going to make it into like a hanging up decoration, now might be the time where we would drill a little hole. But uh, I'm going to get some of our, so this is puffy paint, uh, and it comes out from like a little nozzle. And the only way I can describe it is it comes out and it stays 3D. So it stays a bit like those, um, like grip socks, that kind of 3D, slightly tacky uh, thing, but it means that it stands out and it looks like icing the whole time. So let's put some stuff on here. So, first thing I'm going to do is run a lovely line of it all the way around the edge and it flows out pretty evenly. Dee -dee -dee. Now the pro move is to do little, little drips down on the top and it looks like icing, like icicles hanging off the top of the tree. Off the top of the tree, top of the house. And they come down here and do a little door. And the worse it looks, the more you go, and the kids made it all themselves, even if you've made it. 
And they might do some little icicles coming down off the bottom of the window some too. Make it look a bit droopy. There we go. That'll do for now. Well done. Uh, and it's still kind of wet. You can take some little bits if you want to jazz it up. And this stuff kind of sets a bit like glue. So you can just press things in uh, and put them in different places to make it look a little bit more festive. Maybe I should go and get some red bits and berries. And I tell you what, I'll get these little stems off. And then we can just pop them. Oh, that's so pretty. You can stick them all over the roof. Wem, come and look how pretty this looks. It's so festive! Oh my God. And the less symmetrical it looks, the better. Do you, do you want a little person? Yes, to please. Look, it's me. I've come to live there. Oh, I love my house. And then, sometimes we have made like a whole village and just let them up against the tree and, and play with them. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching, watching our, our video. video. Oh shit! Oh, Lewis and Wem there. How brilliant! Well, that brings us to almost exactly nine o'clock. So uh, that was our twelve crafts of Christmas. Now, please do feel free that if you are tired and in need of uh, a bit of refreshment or sleep, please do feel free to to pop off, and we will see you in twenty twenty four. Um. If you are wanting to stay and share some other things or ask other uh, people about their their craft Christmas crafting successes or failures, um, then please do feel free to pop that in the uh, the chat. This video will be uh, edited, hopefully at some point um, before the end of January, um, and then we will send it out and make sure that people are uh, able to then have a go at crafting along. Um, and watching back some of those excellent crafts that might take a bit longer to practice. Nicole, hello. I saw you untangling your wool. That looks like you <laughs> might have something to share. I have something to share. So I can't take credit for this. It's somebody else's idea, but I thought it was just so great. Basically, it's an eye, screw eye, with an acorn cap and a bit of elder. And you just screw the eye through the acorn cap right into that bit of elder, elder bead, and that's it. And it looks like a little mushroom. Something so simple yet so effective. That is very cute. <laughs> Thank you. I, I should mention, we also have um, Anna from the uh, from the children's forest who is going to share a holly song with us um so don't don't rush off but uh yeah if anyone wants to share any other christmas craft ideas before then nell hey matt i Hi. had to i zipped off to say night to primrose uh midway through lushka's reindeer and came into mimi so i'm not sure if this was done in the middle of that because it's a quite a common one, I think. But I'm just wrapping up the ones that Primrose made for relatives. Oh. I don't know if people have done those before. Did someone do that already? No, no one's no one showed them. So Primrose is ten. She made these ones, but I've done them with my um, year one in forest school. Those of them that wanted to do the palm drill, so it's dead easy. Five five holes. That bit's easy, and then they get in a muddle doing the threading. But it's quite fun, and we put little bells on them. Just for oh, an added bit of festive fun. What's well, better than wool and uh, year ones? I think that's, yeah, and drills. Yes, and all of the uh, golden syrup pots that we need to keep the wools. Yes. Some yeah. sort of order. We, we use um, upturned uh, plastic bottles. So you cut the bottom off the plastic bottle and you drill a hole drill in a the lid. And then you Ooh. feed you feed the thre thread through the the drilled hole, and the ball of wool sits in the the cup, and then they can pull it out. We've made a little plank that you can hang on the tree, so they can 
just pull out the, the amount of wool that they need, snip it off or cut it, cut it with a knife, and then it's ready for the for next next person to use it. Genius. Can steal learn. that. Thank you, I Matt. Shall, I'll, I'll have to post a photo of that. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yes, Kirsty. Does anyone else have any uh, any Christmas crafts that they'd like to share? No. Uh, I did have one that I didn't have time to to share with you, which was our our way of making hot chocolate, um, which I'm sure some people do already. But um, we we hide bars of dark chocolate around in the undergrowth. Um, and then the children have to go on a bit of a treasure hunt for it. And they, once they found the dark chocolate, we melt it into milk. Um, it's easy to do vegan or dairy free options with that. Um, and then once it's all melted in, in the pot, a uh, bit of nutmeg or cinnamon makes it really festive or, or you can, uh, vanilla essence or any of the, the coffee syrups, um, makes it really, really tasty. Kirsty just going to add that if you're making the triangle reindeer you can turn it up the other way to make it a um a triangle christmas tree and just wrap it with green wool instead and do the corners with green wool so just if you wanted an alternative to the reindeer brilliant variation absolutely perfect lovely okay well i think anna it's time to share the, the Holly song. I can't even see if you're here. Hello, I'm, I'm here. Oh, you're there. Hello. Hi, everyone. Oh. Sounds like you've been having a great time with the crafting. I, I wasn't able to come on board to see all the lovely things you've been doing. Well, there's um, always a chance to, to, to watch it back. I have to say, you're sitting oh. in a very, very festive looking uh, surroundings. Well, I mean, the rest of the house is looking really messy, so I kind of positioned myself so that it would look festive. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. The dirty washing's there, <laughs> washing up over there. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, I was invited by Mimi, I think, to come and yeah. share the holy song with you, um, which is um, in the Children's Forest book. And, yeah, so we've been doing a lovely... Um, crafting of doing a different tree each week with our children so last week we celebrated the holly and went and sang the holly song with the children to the holly tree and then harvested some boughs for making wreaths and little holly pendants with a little oem the celtic alphabet um, um, on there and um and then planted the pips of the holly which if you haven't done that's a lovely lovely thing to do with the children you can just um very easily get the pips out of the holly if you mash them um in with um a, like a, a blunt stick in some water in a cup and then sieve it and then you just mix that in with soil and sand half and half and they then they just stratify for about 18 months which i know that sounds like a really long time but if you've got ongoing groups it's so exciting when they do actually pop up a year and a half later Anyway, so I'd be, yeah, love to share this song. And um, if you'd like to, um, if you're on mute and you want to join in with the chorus, I'll just go through the chorus slowly and then um, I'll sing in the verses. So um, it goes like this. <clears throat> oh, holy, oh, holy tree, how green you grow. Green and sun and green and snow. So I'll just sing that round a few times. So the name Holly actually comes from holy. Um, so it is the holy tree, and that's partly because of its um, relationship with the um, four petal flowers. That's the sacred, the sacred cross. We've got the Celtic cross, uh, um, and then the blood red berries, and yeah, there's all sorts of different association with it, but it's. So it's, oh, holy tree, oh, holy tree, how green you grow, green in sun and green in snow. So I'll just sing the song to you, for you. Oh, holy, oh, holy tree, how green you grow, green in 
sun and green in snow. Pearl white honey scented flowers grow on summer's holly bowers. Oh holly, oh holy tree, how green you grow, green in sun and green in snow. Winter brings your blood red berries, blackbirds and the thrushes cherry. Oh holly, oh holy tree, how green you grow, green in sun and green in snow. Safely rest the dear below, when the winds bring ice and snow. Oh holly, oh holy tree, how green you grow, green in sun and green in snow. Holly fires warmth and light, Heart in deep midwinter's night. Oh, holly, oh, holy tree, how green you grow, green in sun and green in snow. <clears throat> Bright protector, constant friend, your shining thorns are land's defense. Oh, holy, oh, holy tree, how green you grow, green in sun and green in snow. Sylvan spirit sanctuary, everlasting greenwood tree. Oh, holy. Oh, holy tree, how green you grow, green in sun and green in snow. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. That was so beautiful. It's so wonderful to be sung to. I was desperate to join in, but I, that experience was lovely. Thank you so much. Anna, what was the book that um, that, that came from? Someone was asking. Oh, sorry, just muted. Um, so that song is in the children's forest book that I co-authored with my colleagues and um, yeah, there's and each one has, um, that you can sing to the tree, and they're all they've all been written to honour the different trees and um, speak a little bit about the tree law within the song. So it's quite a nice way to teach the children about some of the different thing qualities of the trees, but through through singing rather than teaching them. If you see what I mean. So yeah. On that very soothing note, I think we should uh, we should end. Thank you for closing us in song, Anna. And whatever you're doing over Christmas or the festive break, if you're having a break, uh, if you're not, then enjoy yourself. And uh, we will see you in January for another Wednesday webinar on the third Wednesday of the month. We've got a full schedule for next year. So i um, really looking forward to that. All the best, everyone. Oh, Holly. Oh, holy tree, how green you grow, green in sun and green in snow.